Hey guys, Kevin Bennett here. So now, on the 15th of November, I'll be doing a workshop to help people in 2016 become the best that they can be. Change the way you think, change the way you feel, or even get you to just look at yourself from, a, from, a, from another angle, from another perspective. How do you move forward in your life? How do you grow? How do you become the best that you can be? The number one way that I say people grow is to first identify four things. Number one, how have you been feeling? If you haven't been feeling good, then how do you move forward regardless what you achieve? You can have the new house, you can have a new car, you can have all of these things, but if you don't have that feeling, all those things mean nothing. So first of all, foremost, identify how do I feel? The third one is how would I like to feel? What's my ideal feeling? What's, what's the feeling that, that, that's going to make me happy? What's the feeling? How do I want to feel in general? In order for you to move forward, you need to have a clear cut understanding. Just like a sat nav, you need to know your journey. How would I like to feel? And then put right next to it, why? Why do I want to feel that way? What do I do now? Once you identify the first four, what do I do now? And that's your action steps. That's the steps to make you really, 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 really move forward. Okay? The first one is feelings, what we just spoke about. Okay? Once you identify your feelings, everything else starts to fall in place. Yeah? Just see, when we were younger, our parents, were, our parents told us, um, don't talk to strangers. So that was a subconscious core value. But what is your core value that you stand ritual? What, what core values do you have on a daily basis? Hello and welcome to another day in paradise and welcome to another edition of the Unapologetic Negropian. In today's video, as you probably already know, we have had a secretly recorded phone call of Black Sick in conversation with one of her potential clients with her talking in unsavory ways. The phone call was damning. It told us a lot about how she feels about African Americans. It actually told us how she felt about young Gambians living in the diaspora. She showed her true colors, her arrogance, her nonchalant attitude towards her clients. But there is one thing that it didn't confirm. The phone call didn't really confirm that she was scamming people. I know we had a lot of people who were her former clients who approached me, who came on that live, spoke about their experiences dealing with Blacksit, dealing with her organisation, buying land and then having massive issues in securing that land. Yes, we did. We had that. But did we have any proof that she was literally organised in scamming land from these people? Or did we have any solid proof that she was scamming these people, that she's an organized criminal? I didn't really see that. And a lot of people have voiced their opinions. And even the person that sent me the recording said himself, I don't think Blacksit is a scammer. He did say, I do believe Blacksit is a liar a prolific liar, hence the reason why he recorded the phone call in the first place. I've got to admit it myself. I've said it all along. I don't think Blacksit is a scammer. I don't think she's an organized criminal. I don't think she has any ties or any links with organized criminals. Until today. In today's video, we're going to discuss Blacksit's potential ties to the criminal underworld in South London. I'm going to try to answer a few questions. Does she have any intentions of scamming people? Is she a scammer? Does she have any links to anyone who we may think is a scammer? 
Well, we're gonna try and answer this question today, but first I'm gonna ask you to please like, subscribe, share, click the bell notification, and please consider supporting the channel on our Patreon, link in the description. Also, please consider supporting the Oversight channel. The Oversight YouTube channel is up and running. There are 17 videos on there that'll teach you how to invest in Africa securely, safely, and cheaply. The link is also in the description. So at the beginning of this video, you would have seen a gentleman a gentleman up on stage, a British Jamaican gentleman, all nice and dapper in his suit, talking to his audience like a motivational guru type. This guy was up on stage talking to people on how they can live the type of life that he lives, a life of freedom, a life of abundance. This gentleman is somebody that everybody would want to be, right? on the outside, I guess. So who is this gentleman? The gentleman goes by the name of Kevin Bennett. Because I see people fail every single day because they don't have a belief system in place. AKA Kevin Bennett, AKA Lord Kevin Bennett. I just, do you know what? I can't believe that this is another guy who put a title at the beginning of his name. Why do, they call, why do they do this? Why do they call themselves lords and kings and queens and... Uh, why are you doing this for? No one believes that you are. Stop it. Stop it. Get some help. Who is Kevin Benair? Is Kevin Benair is a British Jamaican entrepreneur. He is a person who used to be a roadman. I don't know if you guys in America know what a roadman is. But in England, a road man is like uh, is a guy who, um, well, he's always on the road, right? Because what he'll do is, if he lives in London, he will uh, get his money together and then he'll go up to Manchester, he'll buy himself a key of this or a key of that, if you know what I mean, and then he'll bring it back down to London, he'll chop it up, break it up, break up that one big piece and then he'll give it out to his network and then afterwards he'll wait a few days and then he'll go around and drive around every, all the places collecting the money again and the process starts again. That's a road man, okay? And he normally wears, uh, these road men normally wear like Adidas track suits and they drive high-end BMWs and Mercs. Um, yeah, so yeah, they're basically organized criminals. So that is what Kevin Bennett used to be in London and then he changed his tune apparently he changed his tune got himself an education and then got himself links to the upper class the upper establishment the upper crust in London and of course he changed his life now we all know Kevin Bennett in the Afro-Caribbean community in the UK but you know he's a very well-known guy but he's not well known for the right reasons he's well known for being a scam artist. He's well known for being a front man, the type of person who you should never trust. I'll give you an example. Okay, so Kevin Bennett went through a turbulent time a few years ago, okay? He got accused of being a homosexual, which in the black British community is almost like a death sentence. You'd get cast out of the black British community, not as a whole, but a lot of people who are the old school guys, especially the guys who are the underground criminals, those guys will not accept you if you are a homosexual. And he got kicked out of his community. So he got accused of being a homosexual. When he got accused of this, and he went on another gentleman's YouTube channel to have an interview, but he came out on the interview in order, no, he didn't literally come out, no. He came out in the interview to speak to people about these, to answer these accusations. So in the interview, you're gonna see this for yourself. In the interview, this gentleman asks Kevin Bennett if he is a homosexual. Listen to the way he answers this question. Take a look at this. In the black community, we attack, mm -hmm. and there's, a, there's another thing with, like, with, the, with the gay stuff. Like A lot of people in our community, there's, there's always gay rumors, this person's gay. Yep, I've also heard that- gay as well. That's what I was coming to, so I've heard, <laughs> yeah. that, I've heard that with your, with your character. Do you yeah. think that they've, 
are you gay for people that say that are you gay and if you was gay would you come out and speak about it in the community well put it this first yeah. and foremost i'm not gay yeah yeah i'm not bisexual mm. i'm not even close yeah. now i'm going to explain mm. how that came yeah. about as well mm. if i was gay mm. with my personality mm. I'll say, yeah, and what? Yeah. How did that come about with you? Okay, so can I go back in the story? Yeah, go back. Okay, so let's go, let's go back. Yeah. We need to go right mm. back, yeah? And I hope we've got enough time yeah, yeah. to cover it because there's so much to cover. Um, let's start when my brother died. Yeah. When my brother died, um, which was like 90s, mm. yeah? When he died, I, I knew that there was going to be an onslaught of a lot mm. coming our way. I didn't know where from. And when you are a strategist, you need to always sit back instead mm. of uh, act. Me and my brother's name, Roger, our names was put in the newspaper, mm. in the sun and in the mirror. And it said, these brothers, his brother's being killed and they're going to go to war. Now, I knew it was a bait mm. because why would you put our names in the newspaper to say these guys are going to go to war? Mm. Well, I knew because that was happening, I'm going to fall back. We had police. But it weren't normal police. These police were a special squad that were brought in for us. Bang, dragged out the car, the whole thing. And then a well-known DJ got shot. He got shot. It turned the volume up because they made up their mind. Kevin, who I was in a relationship with at the time. It would be the fourth time now mm. gun police has mm. come for me at that time. When the police came for me at the house in Greenwich, mm. we heard drilling out the door. But it wasn't, it would just sound like drills. Mm. The door flew off and it was lasers all over mm. me. Yeah, gun police. Only reason why they didn't kill me that day, the policeman told me this when he put me in the car, is because she was standing next to me. Okay. They said, the man said to me, you're very lucky, because mm. today we came to take you they out. Just, they were disappeared. Yeah. It's because they found out that these policemen were actually a part of my brother's death. Okay. That's why they got moved. Oh, uh, yeah, no other reason. Well, I knew that they're going to kill me. And I was sure they was going to kill me. What I'd done at that time, I used to play a game, of, I used to I play chess by myself. The chess actually on there, yeah. I used to have names and yeah. things and all that on there. It used to help I kind of said, the police tried this, this person's trying that, this is the rumour. This yeah. I got checkmated Very in mind time. that you've asked me a question yeah, as well, and I've got to get, yeah, I'm going to get to that question, move on with my life, because I knew these guys are going to try and kill me. So, as I started to kind of like, go college, etc. I, I pulled on them at least 25 mentors yeah. globally in every mentors, different sector. Financial mentors, business mentors. And I, I started to one day, it was a light switch, and I said, Kevin, you can win the game. Yeah. I bought my chessboard yeah. bag. I said, Kevin, you need to learn politics. Yeah. You need to understand law. To study common law, um, um, uh, maritime law, um, contract law. I started to study law. Yeah. With a finite tooth comb, with a finite tooth comb, with a finite tooth comb. I started to then do lectures mm. in university. Now, let me try and speed mm. as much as possible into the story. Very powerful people. They started to introduce me to more powerful mm. people. I ended up in the Western world, Covent Garden, and I started meeting aristocrats. And as I started oh. to meet aristocrats, they started to introduce me to... I'm MPs. moving the story very quickly, and I may go back in yeah, the story because... 18, yeah. I went to Abu Dhabi and I met Nicolas Sarkozy, mm. the ex-French president. Yeah. This is before I think he was pulled in for mm. corruption. Yeah and I met David Cameron. It was just straight business. Yeah. So this aristocrat woman, she says, Kevin, go down there and meet these people, mm. but also as well. So she said, meet these people, mm. I'm gonna put your name mm. forward and um, start building relations. Mm. Secret Services mm. has to check you out. You could be anyone, mm. especially in Abu Dhabi. Mm. Aristocrat woman then called me about two weeks later and said, Kevin, if when you problem. give your name to Secret Services, by default, they would research and you. And you were one of the only black people in the room as mm. well. Yeah, and even though I can articulate myself, they still sense there was something. Three days later, she came back to me, and she said they're going to put a campaign up against you. Um, against you, I said why? They said because they've researched you. They don't like where you come they, from. Do you remember this one? They said Kevin's gay, and what is? They had this picture here with me sitting on a man's lap. So that little clip that I just showed you there was four minutes long. It's pretty long, right? It's a four-minute clip, but that is heavily heavily edited. I had to heavily edit it because Kevin Bennett took a full 30 minutes to answer the question. And when he answered the question, do you know what the answer he gave to this gentleman when he asked him who started these rumours? The answer he gave was that the British Secret Services 
didn't like him speaking to all the world leaders in Dubai. So they did a background check on him. And when they found out that he used to be a gangster, they wanted to discredit him in front of these world leaders like Sarkozy and David Cameron, the former Prime Minister of the UK, who apparently he is buddies with. So the secret services began this rumour. They started a campaign to discredit him by calling him a homosexual. Now, guys, if you believe that, then you will believe anything. I'm sorry, but you know, that is, oh gosh. I can't believe that sometimes these people believe that we are this stupid. It's really unfair that we have people like this who think that we are stupid enough to believe that. This guy is a fraud. And we know he has and has had criminal intentions in the past. Right now, on his Instagram, all he has are pictures of him popping bottles on yachts, in Lambos, your typical, oh, do you want to trade Bitcoin? Do you want to do this, that? You know, you get that on YouTube all the time. You see those adverts all the time. It's one of those typical tacky Instagram accounts where he is just trying to push himself out to the public as being a really successful man. But there is nothing there. It is totally void of anything good. It's all empty. This man is a total fraud. He is so much of a fraud, in fact, that we are not even going to go deep into what he is capable of today. Well, why are we talking about him? Why are we talking about Kevin Bennett? Well, I had an email a couple of days ago. And in that email, well, I'll allow you to read it for yourself. Take a listen to this. I just returned from Jamaica on Sunday and went to visit my grandparents. To my surprise, my mum had informed me they were all buying a £90,000 five-bedroom bungalow in Gambia from one Kevin Bennett of TK Bennett Properties Limited. This man is on YouTube and Facebook. He appears to be very successful at what he does, but I've been involved in many businesses in the past and nothing he says makes any sense to me. I queried them about it and came to the conclusion that he was trying to scam them out of their retirement money. They were sold on the dream of retiring in the sun and repatriating to Africa. They attended a meeting of maybe 50 elder members of our community, many of whom were more than willing to part with their money there and then to secure the limited numbers of plots that were available at a reduced price for the early birds deposits are to be made by the 25th of August to secure the plots that are going fast. At the meeting, he kept going on about racism in Britain and it not being our home and the motherland is calling. He also claimed to be working in partnership with Blacksit on this development in Casa Kunda. I've watched some of your stuff and never heard you selling any land or properties. So thought, ah, this is definitely dodgy. My sincere advice for you is to go live distance yourself from this individual and his company before he does further harm to your brand there you go black sit and casa kunda apparently this man has had blessings from black sit to sell the land that he was going to build these non-existent houses on. he had the blessing from black sit to do this why would he say that? So, what did she do? This woman who received this information knew straight away that she had to do something. So she went straight back to Blacksit to warn her of the impending dangers of doing business with Kevin Bennett. And what happened? Nothing. She got no reply. Blacksit tried to sweep this under the carpet and that's it. Why would she act in this way? Why would she not come out and say, I have nothing to do with Kevin Bennett? 
Is it perhaps because she has something to do with Kevin Bennett and she doesn't want the elders in the Afro-Caribbean community in the UK to find out that she is in fact working with a scam artist? Why would she do something like this? She has that ability. They lived in the same area. There is a lot of things that are telling me that there are a lot of alarms going off right now at this present moment. I hope I'm wrong, but it seems as though I am right. It seems as though this guy truly is as diabolical as it sounds and that he is working with Blacksit to scam millions of pounds from the Afro-Caribbean community, the elder Afro-Caribbean community. This is, for some reason this isn't surprising because we all know from listening to the phone call that we heard last week that Blacksit is a diabolical person. She will do whatever needs to be done, even if it means getting her hands dirty, taking the gloves off. She will do whatever it takes in order to keep her name clean. We know because we've seen her do it before. We've seen her lie with every breath that she can muster to try and change people's opinions of her and her organization. This is a warning to everybody, especially those people in the Afro-Caribbean community in the UK. Please do not give any money to Kevin Bennett. That would be the worst decision you ever made in your entire life. So I'm hoping this message gets to you clearly tonight. And I would like to try and help you guys if any of you have given any money to Kevin Bennett and you want to know more about what is happening with your project, or please do not hesitate. Send me an email at tontalks at gmail.com. That is tontalks at gmail.com. We will chase this up. We will make sure that it isn't a scam. I hope I'm wrong. But something tells me that I'm completely right about this. Regardless, we know that his company has been dissolved. He has had many companies dissolved. In fact, if you look at where his current company is based, TK Bennett Properties, if you look at the property where, it, if you simply Google the address where it is based, this will come up. Okay, so this address is already being used by scam artists. It's not looking good. Guys, all I'm saying is that this guy, Kevin Bennett, is the worst of the worst and he should not be dealt with in any way, form or fashion. And if Blacksit is dealing with him, well, I would give her a wide berth too. So guys, what do you think? Do you think Kevin Bennett is a person that you would do business with? Do you think that Blacksit has those ties to Kevin Bennett? Or do you think it's just total BS? Let me know in the comment section below. It'll be really good to hear your opinions on this. So guys, that's all I've got time for for today. I'd like to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I'd like to give an extra special thank you to my patrons, and I'll see you in the next one. Until the next time, please think twice. Ta-ra-ra-ra.